Today we're going for an unplanned return to the drylands. This is a very detailed build of an indoor area for cheetahs based on a facility in Oregon Zoo. I made this back in January I believe, which is why you are not going to see any tropical pack pieces here. Shortly after I got a bit into a period of not being very motivated to play or to make YouTube videos, which is why I never ended up finishing this video. Now I found these recordings again and thought we might as well get it out there. This is for sure the most detailed indoor area I have done so it would be stupid not to show you guys. So I do hope you like it even though it's not quite up to date with the scenery. Since it is like half a year since I made this my memory for it is not very fresh anymore. But I'll do my best to guide you through this anyway. My goal with it was to practice making detailed indoor animal areas. Which is not something I have done all that often. Therefore I decided to make it close to a recreation of something real. Though it is something I only know from a few pictures from Zulex. So it's not a complete recreation but much closer than what I usually do. This building here is part of the predators of the Serengeti area in Oregon Zoo. This seems like a very complex and modern indoor facility for cheetahs, which I find very cool. It looks like something you would expect more for bigger cats, but in like a smaller scale, if that makes sense. It seems to be built with a high level of hygiene and safety in mind, a lot of which I have also tried to include in my version. Therefore there are a lot of fun details like handles for the gates hanging down from the ceiling, hatches to put food in for the animals, safety lines, ventilation and so on. When I built this the twilight pack was the newest scenery pack and it became very useful for this build. The most time consuming part was probably to make the first two pins or so. But when they were done I had created a lot of parts which I was able to copy and reuse with some changes for the rest of the area. According to Zulex, the real house this is based on is built to house 4 males, even though it got 5 pens inside of it, but I assume that is so you can shift the animals around in here. I have not looked much into the outdoor area since I want to build something that fits into the style of the drylands instead. I also don't really know how this building looks on the outside. I could only see a bit of it on Google Maps and my current designs for the outdoor might also change over time. So when I say this comes close to the real deal, it is mostly this holding rooms for the cheetahs based on these two pictures. I will put a link to the Zulex site for this whole complex, so you can better look at it in case that is of interest. As mentioned, this was for me about practicing making indoor holding areas and afterwards I remember sitting back with a bit of mixed feelings. While I really like the result and I also really find it impressive when other creators build stuff like this, it does not feel as rewarding to do as something like a really nice outdoor habitat. Because when you are done with something like this, you zoom out of the building and then it's just kind of there. You can't see this very detailed thing you spend a lot of time on when you just move around the park normally. You must go all the way into the building to see it again, which you probably won't do often. So I don't really know how often I'll end up doing stuff like this, even though I'm quite proud of the result. I kind of hope I'll get more into builds like these over time, because it really does a lot for realism, which is usually what I go for. Often I also end up building for animals more or less fitting the biome the zoo is placed in. It has become a bit of a pattern for me. In zoos like that you don't often see very complicated indoor areas since they are expensive to make and therefore you would avoid them if the animals are anyway able to stay outdoor for the whole year. Instead you might have some simple shelters and maybe some separation areas if needed for the species. But for some animals you would still do it for practical or safety reasons. Something like Siberian tigers will often still have a solid indoor building in cold climate zoos, even though they could stay outside in that climate the whole year. But they are built anyway to better be able to separate the tiger from its main enclosures, so the keepers can enter safely. But it can also be in case you need to lock the animals inside, in case of something like a storm or other safety concerns. Since I had a period of not playing so much after I finished this, I never really got around to test it. 
And since the cheetah is a base game animal, I fear its hitboxes won't do all that well in here. When I really get back into the Twilands, I will try it out some more and change the gates and so on if needed. But for now I'll make it stay like this. And now that we're here, I guess we might as well talk about the Twilands for a bit. And of course also the Arid Animal Pack, which has just got announced. Because that pack will of course end up playing a big role in this pack. But right now I don't want to get too much into this new DLC. Since I was planning on getting this video out before anything would get announced. And right now I'm trying to figure out how I best deal with this pack. Both when it comes to content but also just because it's not really what I was hoping it would be. If I'm being honest I'm quite disappointed with it. So I guess I need to overcome that a bit. But no matter what it will for sure bring us back to the dry land so make sure to follow the channel if you don't want to miss out on that. And I haven't really touched this park since I started Kenobi Gardens half a year ago. I do hope I can reach a point where I can start to mix up the content from the two parks a bit more. I just want to get a good amount of work done in Kenobi Gardens first. But it did end up taking longer than I expected. But now with the Arid Animal pack we do have an obvious reason to return to the dry lands. Even though that pack will mostly add to one part of the zoo but I might end up doing changes to other areas too. I do also still have some recordings for my latest build in Kenobi Gardens. I still need to edit, so I hope I can still find the time and motivation for that in the middle of all this. So it doesn't end up like this build here, but it might not be among the next things I do. I have a lot of ideas right now, but I don't really have a solid plan for what I will get done first. And I'm not really sure how much time I got to do it either. And I also want to do some videos which aren't speed builds. I guess my channel have been a bit experimental lately and it might continue to be so. But I'll make sure that there is some in-game content among it all too. And with this video out it will be easier to continue the drylands with some stuff related to the new DLC. This video is coming to an end now. There is some footage missing of how I finished up this building and the outside of it is also not very detailed at the moment. So we'll just be looking quickly at the finished result now and then I guess we'll return to it one day whenever I do a complete enclosure for cheetahs. Thank you for stopping by here and make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, even though it might not be completely up to date.